G'day everyone and welcome to our Victorian Department of Education uh, Remote Learning Webinar 4, Authentic Assessments with Microsoft Forms. My name is Troy Waller, I am a Learning Delivery Specialist from Microsoft. Um, I'm also a former teacher, so hopefully um, I'm going to be able to give you some insight into how to use um, this tool as, as an assessment tool. Now I have had a lot of fun building this webinar because Forms is actually my favourite uh, Microsoft and Office 365 tool. Um, so I hope you're going to get a lot out of it too. I think some of the things that you can do with this um, and especially its integration across the different tools in Microsoft, you know, part of our ecosystem is actually going to be um, quite eye opening and hopefully you're going to be able to use this tool in a really powerful way in reaching your students as as they work from home and as you work from home with this whole remote learning thing. Um, I've got Clara with me today. I'm going to get her to come off mute and say hi. She's going to handle your Q&A or the, the Q&A, I should say. So as questions come up, she'll be answering them by text, but also from time to time we're going to stop and um, and I'll let her fire those questions away. So Clara, do you want to say hi to everyone? Hi everyone, my name is Clara. I'll be helping Troy like he did mention in the Q&A section. So pop any of your questions in there and I'll be able to help you out. Excellent. So I think a little bit different to what I've done in the previous webinars is I'm actually going to hold the, the Q&A until the end. Um, the reason why is there's so much that I want to show you. I want to make sure I get through it all. And also I think a lot of your questions will be answered as we sort of move along. OK, so, so keep those in mind. The other thing I want to remind you of is that those earlier webinars, um, this webinar certainly builds on what we've learned in the previous uh, three webinars. So um, please go back and listen to those at the end of today. I will share some links um, and bits and pieces with you on where to find um, those earlier webinars, the recordings, um, the slides, and also the recordings and the slides for this as well. But anyway, on that note, um, let's get going. So I do want to draw your attention again to aka.ms forward slash Microsoft Remote Learning. This is our landing page, our start page for you for everything that you need to know about remote learning in the Microsoft space. So please feel free to jump in and look at that. Also, some of these webinars and other webinars from around the country from my colleagues who are doing stuff, um, they, they're all uh, pushed up onto that, um, that site there. There's links to our YouTube channel um, so you can access them there as well. So let's get going. So the agenda today is we're going to look at the Microsoft Educator community really quickly. Um, then I'm going to show you how to use forms to create an assessment. I'm going to show you how to check results, the settings and sharing features um, and how important that is. But then, as I said to you, what gets exciting is when we start to look at how we can use forms in other tools. Um, and that's when what appears initially as a limitation of forms actually becomes um, so much, you know, amazing because we start to see that the limitations are actually sort of, you know, um, unbridled when we use it in PowerPoint or when we use it in Stream or we use it in OneNote and of course we use it in Teams as well. Um, I'll also share with you some next steps so you can continue your learning and get better um, at using this than, than even I am, which would be awesome. And then we'll also have um, a bit of Q&A time. So again, Microsoft Educator Center, this is our professional uh, development or professional learning portal. It is online. It's 100% online. You go to education.microsoft.com, education.microsoft.com. Uh, make sure that you sign in um, after you've signed in using your um, school email address and password, then it will keep a, a record of everything that you do. And these courses are recognized by the VIT and also the, um, the other teacher registration boards around the country. So um, you can actually meet your PD requirements by doing the courses in the Educator Center. Um, go back and have a look at some of our previous webinars where I sort of go in more in depth. Um, about the Educator Centre or just go in and have a bit of an explore. It's really not hard to work out. So the start page for Office 365 is www.office.com. Um, and then once you get to uh, the sign in page, well, then obviously you need to sign in. Now, if you are at um, a non Victorian Education Department school, uh, then it'll just be your email address and your password. That's probably what you'll use just to sign in. But for those of you that are from a department school, if you are using EduMail, um, then you will need to sign in using your TO number at 
education.vic.gov.au. Please notice it's not edumail, um, it's education.vic.gov.au and then your regular EduPass password it is connected. If your school happens to use um, its own email system, chances are you'll need to use that to log into um, Office 365, but not necessarily. Um, so remember your TO at education.vic.gov.au. All right, now looks like someone's trying to send me messages here, so I'm going to jump back into that and let's keep moving. So when you come into office.com, um, you need to find forms. Now here I've got a little bit of a graphic up here, which is where forms is, but I'm going to take you instead into the live version. So when you're on office.com, and this is this is my login page, you can see here, um, forms sits here. But if you can't find forms there, then just click on the all apps button and that will open up for uh, the, all the apps, you'll be able to see them all and you'll find forms in there. The other thing you can look for is up here in the app launcher. If you click on it, forms will be here or again in all apps. All right, so so that's how we find forms. Pretty easy. Um, but if I was to click on that, it would it would open forms. And if you come in for the first time, you're going to get some some welcome messages and that kind of thing. Um, but for me, I've been here before, so you can see these are forms that I've actually created before. All right, so let's look at how we create an assessment. So what I'm going to do is show you a form that I have created once before. It's called the My Office 365 Summative Assessment. So I have created this for my students and my imaginary students to do um, some sort of assessment that I want them to do. Now, the limitations is with, with with all of this is you can't manage what the students are actually looking at at home, right? So even if we were able to lock down the system, which we can, and I can um, tell you a little bit about that later, but there's nothing to stop them, for example, getting out their uh, second device or their phone or whatever and being able to look up answers on the internet and all that kind of thing. The idea of locking down our device so that they so that the students can't do anything else during an assessment is really good when we're able to manage the room. But if you're sending them home, then really it's kind of moot because there's not much that, that you can do in terms of managing other things they're doing, other people in the room, um, you know, like I said, other devices, etc. So keep that in mind, right? That this is not going to necessarily be used for high stakes testing, but it can be used for, you know, um, less essential testing, but also formative testing and things like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go into this quiz here, okay, this this assessment that I've created, and it's called, um, as I said, Office 365 Summative Assessment. You can see it's got, it's worth 27 points. That's what the students can ax, um, sorry, can, can score through this test. Now, I'm going to come up here to preview because I want to show you what it looks like to the student. All right, so there it is here on a um, computer device, or I can also see what it looks like on a mobile device, right? So I can make sure that everything is there that I, I want to be able to see, but in this case, we're looking at it on a on a um, desktop or a laptop. So when the student comes in, they get, um, uh, I've made the student sign in, so it will actually give them a, um, a personalized hello, um, saying their name, etc. And you can see the kinds of questions that I've got here. I've got a date of birth question, so they can only enter a date of birth um, or, or a date question, I should say. That I've also got um, a true and false question that I've created. All right, so you can create true and false questions. I've got a um, multiple choice single answer question as well. And then down here, you'll see I've got a multiple choice multiple answer question. Okay, so that's another kind of question that I can do. Um, the other one I've got here is what's called an ordering question. So I like ask them to put it in alphabetical order or some sort of order that's relevant to the type of test and the students can actually just grab things and move them around or they can use the arrows to go up and down as well. So that's called an ordering question. I'm going to show you how to create all these in a minute, but I just want to show you the kinds of questions and what it looks like to the student. Um, we can see here we've got a short answer question. So this food is very popular in England, what and chips, and then the student can just type that in there. All right. So that's a short answer question. And then we've got a long answer question as well. All right. So um, you certainly wouldn't use forms for um, essay writing, but you can use it for sort of paragraph questions if that's and paragraph answers if that's what you want. 
I've also got the ability to give something a rating. Now that might be more relevant to a survey than an assessment, but nevertheless, it's there. And you can see I've also embedded a video inside here. And up here earlier on, you can see I've embedded pictures, right? But we'll go through that a little bit later as well. You can have maths questions as well. So you can see here I've created that. Um, I'm going to take you through and show you how that works. Um, and then you can also have an upload file question. So in other words, I might ask the student to um, upload something that they've worked on um, as part of the assessment. So we can use it as an assignment receiving tool, but also we might get them to build something while they're doing the quiz and then they upload it as well. So you can see here that I've actually set it as an Excel question, but I could set it as a Word document or a PDF or something like that. All right, so that's what it looks like for the student, but I wanna show you what it looks like for me as a teacher at the back end. All right, so what I might do first is I might actually jump back into my start page. I'm going to show you how we create a quiz. Um, and so the assessment here is 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 because very American is called a quiz. Um, the form is more survey style. All right, so there are other, are other question types that we can use in the form um, than, than what I showed you, but we're going to do a quiz. So I'm going to click on that. All right, and then I get to give it a title. So I'm just going to call this my test quiz. Um, and I'm going to call it my test assessment. I'm going to stay away from those Americanisms. Um, so there's my test assessment. And um, there's a lot of other things I could do at this point. I could add a graphic and etc. But we'll go through that a little bit later. But I want to show you how we create questions. And it's really, really simple. So when I click on a question, you see I get a choice, okay? So that can be um, true or false. That is just two options, one called true, one called false, or I could have um, uh, multiple choice, right? So they have uh, numerous answers and they choose one. And as I showed you before, you could have multiple choice, multiple answers. I've got my text questions in here as well. I've got my rating questions, which we saw before. I can make them put in a date. Um, there's that ranking, that ordering that I showed you before. Um, there's that file upload question. We've also got Likehart and Net Promoter scores, which are more about um, surveys and, and survey data, et cetera. And I can also create sections inside my quiz as well. All right, so it's really, really easy to create a question. Now, I'll just show you. I'm just going to show you how I would do a true or false one. So if I'm going to just change that to true, and I'm going to change this one. Look, it's already giving me a suggestion here, right? So I can click on that. I'll throw the false in and I'll say Troy is a good webinar host. Question, right? True or false? Now, look what happens here, okay? I could add further options if I wanted to make that multiple choice, etc. cetera, um, but I'm not going to. Um, I can, if, if I want it to be multiple answers, given the option of having multiple answers, then I can turn that on. Um, do I want this question to be required? In other words, do I want to make sure that the student has to answer this question or cannot submit the, um, the quiz? And so I may want to do that. Um, the other thing I can do down here is I could change those to drop down rather than um, show the whole thing. Um, I can create a maths question, which we'll have a look at a little bit later. I can also create a subtitle so I could put instructions in here just to clarify if I wanted. And I can also assign points. So I might say, yes, that's worth one point. OK, um, the other thing I can do at this point is I can also set a theme. OK, so when I click on theme, you see there's a lot of different ideas that they've actually given us templates for themes. Um, I might make this a, a science quiz, for example, or a science test. Or I can even upload my own graphic if that's what I wanted to do. All right, so that's. That's what that looks like. Now, I think what I do want to show you as well is I want to show you how to create a maths question because, and and please understand, I'm not a maths, te maths teacher, so this may actually work out to be a little bit difficult for me, um, but we want it to be a, um, let's make it a multiple choice question and we're going to make it a maths question. So I'm going to click on maths there. Um, and then my question here is actually, it's just solve this equation. All right, and I put that in there and then I want to enter an equation. Now, when I click on that, I get my equation, uh, my, my symbols and equation box come up. So it could just be something like 3x um, times 5x uh, equals 1023. All right, so I click there and click OK. And then what I might say here is I want to say here, I'm going to say solve, because I've just realized not solve this equation, but solve for X. All right, now what happens here 
is it's actually given me a series of potential answers, one being correct. In other words, it's actually solved it for me. OK, so I'm going to throw that one in as number one, and then I'm going to throw that one in for number two. I'm going to throw that one in for number three, or I could have clicked that add all button, right? Um, and I'll throw that one in as well. Now you can see what happens is as I've created the question, I've actually got the option to decide whether it's, what, what is the correct answer, but this one has already done it for me, right? But I don't want necessarily the first answer coming up um, being the right one every time. So I've got to remember to click shuffle options down there as well. But there you go. OK, so that's actually created a maths question for me. Now, you as maths teachers could, you know, obviously going to do a lot more than I just did there, but I just wanted to show you that that's how it works. Now, the other thing too is when I um, uh, come up here to this one, I didn't give a, a correct answer. So Troy is a good webinar host. I hope you agree. I'm going to say yes. OK, the other thing that I could do here is I could give feedback um, related to the answer they give. So for example, if they say false, I could say, oh, come on, he's great. So if someone was to say false, that's actually what they would get as a response right away. I can choose to use that, yes or no, it's up to me. All right, so that's how we go about creating those questions. And I wanted to show you specifically about um, creating a maths question. So I'm gonna come back into my already created one in here because I want to show you some of the really cool things that you can do beyond creating that assessment. So the next one, of course, is checking results. All right. So now I'm going to show you how we go about checking results, um, where it lives and some of the other things that we can do in that space as well. So coming back into our form. You can see that here I've got um, seven people have already um, done this this quiz, all right? So or, or this assessment, and I I could um, and, and I will excuse me share with you how we go about um, sharing that with people so that they can access it. But I want to come in and show you here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because I want you to see that I get a sort of a back end view, all right, of the assessment, not just at the questions, but also as a teacher, I get to see like a snapshot across my entire class of how well people have done. All right, so I made this one so that everyone had to sign in, so I don't have to ask for their names because it'll automatically record their names. But I got them to put in their date of birth and you can see there I've got seven responses. But then down here, these answers that have actually been um, marked because this one can't be marked, they've actually um, been auto marked by the machine. So what I'm saying there is that the machine, the um, the forms has actually looked, is there a definitive answer to that question? And if it is, then if there is, excuse me, then it will save, um, it, will, it will mark it and save those results for me. So remember I set this as true. So you can see here in my class that um, I can look as a snapshot across everyone and go, mm, as a cohort, I've got to work on this topic here. Um, or as a cohort, they're actually doing quite well down here. And I get sort of snapshots right across my class. Um, and if I want to drill down and look at individual answers, and I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger, I want to see everybody's answer in this space, right? So I click on that. It's going to tell me the name of the student and their answers, all right? So I can look at that data straight from there. All right, and that's true of all my different questions. So for example, if I wanted to see, you know, what's going on with these kids here, I click on more details and there's all my students listed, who's got it right and who's got it wrong. All right, so that's how we look at that as, as a whole class. But what I might wanna do instead is I might wanna look at each student and look at the entire test. All right, so I'm gonna jump into here and here we can see I can jump through my students, all right, through this way, or I could be jumping through my students by going to the next student like that. All right. Now, when I look at Steve's, I can see that this question didn't have any points, right? This one did, and it's auto graded, so it's already assigned him the points, right? So I can decide how, when I'm creating the questions, how many each, uh, how many points each one is worth. And um, I scroll down, I see, great, he's done really well down here, but I'm going to come to a question fairly soon. Um, where I have to actually mark it. Now, in this case, what's happened is because I've actually gone in earlier, um, I've had to, uh, you know, the, the marks are already there. But what would happen is there would be a blank box there and I would have to mark it because it says there, as you can see, needs a review, right? So I would come in, read his question and say, yeah, not a bad answer. I'll give you four points. And at that point, I could give him feedback. 
I could give him feedback to that question or any of the questions. All right. But what's interesting about this quiz or this test is that these questions are all auto mark except for one, which is this one here. Now you think about that in terms of your time as a teacher having to mark your assessments, right? And especially when there's multiple choice or short answer and it's, you know, the answer is definitive. It's really, really easy um, uh, for, for this to do it rather than you sit there in front of the television marking it, you know, pen and paper, etc. So when we send this out to the students, when they complete the quiz, when they complete the assessment, it's auto marked where possible. But in this case, this question here, I have to do it myself. So let's have a look, right? I click review next, come to the next one. You can see that needs to be reviewed. So I'm going to say, oh, that's a great, great answer. Actually, not so good. I'm only going to give you two points. I could give them feedback and then I go to the next one. All right. And on and on and on. I go. And also you can see the other one that needs to be um, assessed is where they've uploaded their data as a spreadsheet, right? So I've asked them to do that as a question. I can come in, click on this, um, read their assessment through the Excel spreadsheet, and then I can give them points. So in this case, I'm going to give them 10 points for that one, pretending I looked at it. Okay, that's it. It's done. So now when I come back, um, all I can see my average score is 19.3, I've got the seven responses, but the next thing I can do is I can post scores, right? So by posting the scores, students will actually get um, a notification saying that this is how many scores, you know, this is how many points they've made, etc., and it becomes, you know, public or, you know, pseudo public. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna look at my data, and that's when I come down here into Excel. So the cool thing is we are living in the, Microsoft um, 365 environment ecosystem. So we're able to integrate into Excel and you can see down here that what it's done is it's actually created a um, spreadsheet for me. And that's opening now. Sorry, it's opening on my um, screen down here. So I'm just going to drag that up for you and show you what we actually get. Now, the cool thing about this, right, is it's going to actually record more data than you possibly could have done if you were doing this manually, right? So once upon a time, um, I would have had to do all that marking. Now it will do most of the marking for me. But I also, once upon a time, had to grab that data, those answers or those scores, and put them into a spreadsheet. The cool thing about um, this is it will do it for you. OK, so you can see here I've got the, the number that they came in and did the test. So who came in first, second, third, not by scores, just by the, the, the um, order that they actually completed it in. You can see I've got a start time and a completion time. So that's really cool data to have because I can look and say, OK, that student did this in a minute and a half and got 100 um, percent. That may be possible, may not be possible. Or I could look at another student and maybe that the quiz has been open for 45 minutes. Um, and I know that a quiz really doesn't take that long. Um, so that could be something, you know, information that's really important. Um, it gives me their email address, their name, the number of points that they've got. So there's all their scores. And that's probably once upon a time, I probably would have just had that in my spreadsheet, just that little bit of information now. But this will actually record the entire, like if I want to give feedback for the entire quiz, it will record it there. Um, if I've posted the grades, it will record what time I posted the grades. And then it starts to post, uh, record their answers, right? So think about this, if it was pen and paper test and I hand them back, I wouldn't be able to act, uh, to know what they've, they've done. This actually records everything. So it's not only recording the date, it's also recording the points and any feedback I gave for that specific question as well. So you can see here that this spreadsheet now has all the information I could possibly need about this um, uh, about this assessment. All right, so it's really, really very cool. Now, when we're thinking about remote learning, the fact that the students can actually do this assessment, right, whether it's formative or summative, and then that data is sent to me immediately. All right, so I'm not waiting for all the students to complete. I'm not waiting for them to email it to me. As soon as they complete that quiz and that assessment, then that data is all ready for me to open up in Excel. OK, let's keep moving. So when we talk about sharing, right, um, the, the settings for forms and also sharing it out. So let me come back into my, my form here and I want to show you some of the settings that I can do. All right, now the first thing I can do is what's called branching. 
All right, so when I click on branching, what branching does is it helps me to decide um, where the students go next in the in the quiz, if they get an answer correct or if they get an answer incorrect. So for example, you can see here that uh, please enter your date of birth and they, they, if they get it right or wrong, it doesn't matter, they'll automatically go to the next question. Now, when I click on here, what happens is um, they answer the question, if it's true, I want them to go to question three, but if they get it wrong, I want them to go down here to question 11. Okay, now the reason I want them to go to question 11 is if we come down to question 11, question 11, it says watch this video and then answer the question again. So it's going to ask them that question, question two or question three, whatever it was, it's going to ask them again um, the question. And what I've done on that question, I've actually embedded a video explaining this point to them again. So what happens now is the student who gets it wrong will go down to the to the explanation question the student that gets it right can keep going and what happens for the student that gets it right is their version of this quiz or this assessment will never see question 11. once they get to question 10 it actually ends for them all right so it's what's called branching so you can make it that if they get a question right they can go to harder questions you can make it if they get a question wrong they go to easier questions or you can review the content and ask the question again which is what i've done there so to explain that again just to make sure you understand that what i've done there is if they get that question right they go to the next question but if they get it wrong they come all the way down here to this question which shows them a video and asks them that same question again. So that's branching and that's pretty cool that that's in there. Um, the other thing is settings. So do we wanna show the results automatically? Um, if I'm, if I'm, uh, I've got some kids that haven't done the test yet, I don't want the answers to be out there right away, but um, maybe in some instances I do, all right? So I may wanna show the results automatically or I may wanna turn that off. Um, who can fill in this form? Anyone with the link? That is people outside of my Office 365 environment, outside of my school, I might wanna share it with them, especially for something like a survey. But with an assessment, no, you have to log in. Only people in my organization can respond. So they have to have um, one of our school email addresses. It will record their name. And do I want to have one response per person or do I want to let the students do this quiz again and again? Um, that's fine, I may want to do that, but each time they do it will record on that Excel spreadsheet as a different attempt. Um, the other thing is, um, do I want to accept responses? That's basically turning the quiz on and off. Um, do I want to have a start date or an end date? So I could actually set that just to run for a week. Um, I want to maybe shuffle the questions so they're not seeing the questions in order in case, you know, one question builds on another, etc. cetera. Um, and I also may want to customize a thank you message, which means at the end of the quiz, um, I just want to say thanks for doing this, good luck or something like that. Notification wise, I can send email um, receipts to the respondents. That is when they finish the quiz, they get an email saying, you know, you, we've received your quiz or received your assessment. And I may want to get an email notification each time someone does that as well. When you've got a class of about 30, remember that turns into about 30 emails, but that's up to you. My advice is to use it sparingly. So that's our settings, okay? Now in terms of sharing, there's three things that we can do for sharing. You can share it out just to people in your organization, or you can share it with anyone with the link. We talked about that a little moment ago. Um, but when I share it, I can grab a link like that. I just click copy and I get a, a link, and then I can do what I want with that link. But the other thing I can do is I can actually create a, a QR code, right? So I could email that QR code or somehow, you know, put it on social media or make it available to my students. They would still, even if that, that QR code went public, they would still need to sign in though um, to be able to access that. So I could download that QR code. I can also throw an embed code. So if I've got some sort of program that allows me to embed other frames, I could put that in or I could send it as an email. So that's how we share it out. All right. Now there's another thing here called share as a template. And what share as a template does is it allows me to share this assessment to other teachers or other people that may want to use um, the entire assessment. So what I mean by that is if I built this and my friend in um, down in, in the year seven science says that's a great, great assessment. Can I have it? I can just copy that link and send, send that to them and then they would um, paste that link into their browser, save a copy and then that assessment now has a life of its own so they can make changes and not affect mine all right so it's, it's a good way to share what we've built but we can also share to collaborate 
And sharing to collaborate obviously means that I could share this link so that people that open that link will actually come into this version. Um, so for example, I might say, I'll do questions one to six and you do questions seven to 12 and you do, you know, and I could share that out and we can build the same one. And then at the end of that, if we want, we can then um, share the, the template and then people you know, can have a life of its own for each individual person. All right, so that's how we share. Now, I know I'm moving in a million miles an hour and I know that there's a lot of information here, but remember you do have the video and you are most welcome to, um, to jump back in, uh, and, and have a look through. All right, so that's forms, okay? Now I can hear you already thinking about, yeah, but it's text-based and it's, you know, multiple choice or short answer. Um, but I want to share with some of you that, that I want to share now with you some of the absolutely cool things you can do when we start to move it into another environment or into other things in the ecosystem. So let's have a look at how we could do this in PowerPoint. So right now I've got a PowerPoint set of PowerPoint slides that I'm sharing with you um, and I'm clicking through. And if I was to go to my next slide, which is blank, fine, but my next slide, look at this, my next slide is actually the form. So I could act, I could build a series of lessons as a PowerPoint and partway through, beginning, end, however I wanna do, I can actually build the form into the PowerPoint slide. And look at this, the students can actually do the uh, assessment straight into the PowerPoint deck, right? Now, how does that work? Well, let me share with you because it's pretty cool. Um, I'm just gonna have to grab my version of PowerPoint because I want to take you guys in and show you the back end. So this is where the magic happens. Um, so you can see here, this is my PowerPoint deck. And what I've got here is I've actually got um, a blank slide, which I've gotten ready. And then I, I come up here to insert and you can see here that I've got forms. All right, there's a little forms button. So when I click on the, my forms button, what happens is I get a dialogue box appear like this, this is my forms dialogue box. And here's all my existing forms, all right? So it's speaking to the back end of, um, of forms and it's bringing that in. Um, and I can say, I want it to be my Office 365 summative quiz. And I would just click insert and then it would appear on my slide just like that, all right? So think about that. You could actually build um, a, a series, a, a lesson engagement, I should say, and then at any point or even a number of points through that, um, uh, through that PowerPoint presentation, the students are actually forced to stop, do the um, do the assessment, and then they keep going. It's also a really good way of making sure that they're watching the PowerPoint presentations that you're sending them, because remotely we can't manage our classes like we used to. So now the student will actually be forced to do that quiz, um, and if they don't do it, then you know they possibly haven't even opened your file, which would just be heartbreaking, wouldn't it? So I'm just gonna move that back down there excuse me for that, and let's keep moving. So that's what it looks like in PowerPoint, all right? But the next thing I wanna show you is what's called Microsoft Stream. So if you don't know, Microsoft Stream is part of Office 365. Um, it is your video storage and video repository for making videos, storing videos, and, and um, doing a little bit of editing and all that kind of stuff as well. So I'm gonna show you where that lives. So I'm going to come back into my Office 365 start page and you can see Stream is here. Now, if you can't find Stream, again, all apps in there or try all apps in here um, and then you would open Stream. So when I click on Stream, what happens is I come into my Stream start page, right? So Stream actually holds all my videos and you can see all the different videos that I've created. I can have channels very much like your YouTube experience. I can have channels. Um, I've, I can record meetings through Teams, a whole heap of stuff. Um, but if I click on videos, you can see these are all my different videos that I've actually created um, or, or uploaded either or. And then when I click on this one, so this is our last webinar actually. This was our um, remote learning webinar three and I've just got to make sure that it doesn't start playing. Um, so. I might have this video and partway through this video, let me just come to a random point. At this point in the video, I may want to ask them some questions. I may want to embed a form. And what's cool is, can you see over here, I've got the interactivity button. I click on the interactivity button and yes, just like I did in PowerPoint, I can add a form. Now what I need to do is I need to grab my link. All right, so I come back to my share uh, um, my share button here. I copy the link. All right. Then I come back into my video and I paste 
the link in there. And then I'm going to call this my um, O365 summative assessment. OK, and where do I want to position on the timeline? I could I could type that in or I can just be dragging this along. All right, but I'm going to add it at that point in the video right there. So now what happens is when the students are watching my little video, I'm just going to bring this back a little bit. So my students are watching my little video and as it plays, all right, I'm just going to turn the volume down. So as that plays, it's it's chugging along. And when we get to 1350, Right, I'm just going to let that go for 15 seconds. I hope you don't mind, but that video is playing along, explaining whatever it is that the kids need to to know. And then when they come to the point in the video that I want that form to appear, you watch what happens. Bang, just like we saw in PowerPoint, in comes the video. So this is another way of making sure that the students are watching the video or we could ask questions to make sure that they're understanding the video. You as a teacher, I'm sure you're seeing the potential for this. It's phenomenal. Um, but see over here, I can then continue the video. So after the student has finished doing that assessment, all right, and it could just be a question, a simple question just to make sure they've watched it. They click continue to video and the video keeps playing. And I can have numerous assessment points through the one video. I hope you're excited by that because I am. I think that's absolutely brilliant. All right, so that's what it looks like in stream. Remember, you can go back and, and review all this by watching the video. Let's talk about what it looks like in OneNote because the problem I, I think when I look at forms, at least you know outside of the ecosystem, I look at it and say, okay, you know, it's short answer, yeah, maybe long answer, but um, you know, multiple choice, etc. I really want to be able to see my students working out. I want to see what it is that they're doing. So that's cool because what we can do, and those of you that have already done my OneNote workshop, um, and if you haven't, please go back and do my OneNote workshop, um, is I can put assessments inside OneNote. All right, and it's really easy to do. So I've created a OneNote page here um, that could live in my collaboration space or my content library. It could live wherever I want it to live. It doesn't matter. I can insert. What I could do is I can just grab that link that I used before and I'm going to paste that link in because I want to show you one that I built a little bit earlier and I'm just going to try and get rid of that. There we go. So you can see here that when we come down to the maths question, Right, I want to see my students working out and it's very hard for my student to actually um, do a maths, you know, a maths equation just using text like that. So instead, by popping it into OneNote, right, you can see here that the student is actually able to write the question out, whether they're using touch or whether they're using a, a, a stylus enabled device. All right, and then what we can do is the student could actually show me all they're working out over here and that might be all I need to do. All right, um, and then when they get that question right or get the question wrong, I can pop back into their OneNote section and I can look at, um, for example, in Bonnie's section there, I can go in and look at what uh, her actual working out. Or what I could do instead, which is even better, is if the student is struggling with this question, I allow them to use the maths feature in here. So let me show you how that works. So what happens with this student is they, let's say that they get this question wrong, okay? They get the quiz, um, the assessment details back and it says that they've got it wrong and they can't work out why and we are now remote learning and there's no way that the student could actually ask me those questions because I'm doing a million things with a different million different classes. Um, so what happens is the student actually uses the lasso feature here, highlights that question and then clicks the maths button. Now you can see that what's happened there is from that um, handwritten uh, equation that OneNote has actually read it, okay? And then I could click Ink to Maths, which would turn that into a printed um, thing on the page, which we saw before. But more importantly, I want to find the answer to this question. So in this case, um, depending on which question I've asked them, do I want to differentiate X or Y? Let's just say it's this one here. Actually, let's go with this one down here. Is they actually get the answer to the question, depending on which question I ask them to find. Um, depending on which one that they're asking. And then what I can do is I can actually get it to show steps. That is the solution step. So it will actually take them through and work as a tutor and help them to find the answer. But if they're still struggling, and this is where forms comes back in, if I click down here and then click generate a practice quiz, 
what happens now is it actually generates a quiz exactly the same as the question that they were struggling with. All right, so there we go. They've got a whole series of questions. Um, in this case, I've only done three, but a whole heap of questions exactly like the one that they were struggling with before. OK, so that's what it looks like. Now, remembering it doesn't have to be maths. It could be any kind of working out or any kind of thinking, whether it's science, etc. that's just locked directly into this um, into this form and happens out on the side. OK, so let's talk now about inside teams as we come on to the home stretch for this webinar. So what happens here with with teams when I come into. Teams inside here, so I'm going to jump into teams. I'm going to open up this team now. If you haven't seen our teams webinar, please go back and, and have a look, um, but I can bring my. By clicking that little plus, I can bring forms straight into my team and have it as a tab across the top. All right, so here it is. It's actually saying, do you want to create a new form or do you want to add an existing form? I want to add an existing form. And in this case, it's the Office 365 Summative Assessment. Um, I'm going to put it in there. I click Save. And now what happens is that form actually sits as a tab inside the class team. So the students could, could access it in OneNote or maybe they're going to come in and access it in here. All right, but it's still going to use their identity. So it's not like they can do it, um, you know, as, as two different people or, or anything like that. So that sits up there, which is kind of cool. But the other thing I want to show you is, um, and again, please go back and visit our first webinar about using the assignment features and using that inside Teams. But I want to show you how I can create, um, use forms as an assignment tab. So for example, if I hit create here and then click quiz, it actually gives me the option of using my form, okay, a form that I've already created, right, or I can create a new form. And that actually now integrates fully with the assignments features inside Teams. So I just want to show you what happens here. So here's one that I created earlier. All right, so you can see here that that form has been set for these four students. None of them have, have done the form yet. All right, I can edit that form if I want to, but I can also look at what the students see, right? So if the students click on this, they open the form. But where it gets really cool is when I come over here to grades, you can see that the the um, the form will not only be auto graded, but then after that, it will actually um, save all the results for the students in here as well. And so I can um, integrate that really well with the with the assignments feature in Teams. So that's where we see forms inside OneNote, forms inside Teams. Really quite amazing. Um, and remembering that OneNote is still inside here, so I can actually be using forms inside Class Notebook inside Teams or I could just use forms directly inside Teams. Pretty cool. All right, let's keep going. So in terms of next steps, so support.office.com forward slash forms. That's actually a really important page because what that is, is this is your forms help and learning, all right? So this is all the um, uh, how to use forms. So it's not so much about using it as a teacher, it's just using forms for anybody. So how to get started, how to share and collaborate and format. But the stuff that I was showing you a moment ago about integration, so how to use um, surveys and polls in a Microsoft Stream video, or how to use it in Excel, or how to use it in Teams, or even inside Outlook, how to use it inside Sway, etc. So that's that integration. So the sky's the limit for what you could actually do in that space. Now, the other one I want to show you is um, support.office.com forward slash education. All right, support.office.com education. So this is my um, help page specifically for using forms as a teacher. So if you scroll down here, you'll see there's Microsoft Forms, Find Forms Answers, and there's all about how to use it now with my students. So this is different to the other page, which is just how to use forms. This is how to use it in an education context about creating surveys and quizzes and sharing those quizzes and looking at how it works in schools. So there's a really good link here on about seeing the full life cycle of a quiz using Microsoft Forms. Really, really worth going in and exploring that. All right, the other thing um, I want to draw your attention to is um, remembering aka.ms forward slash Microsoft Remote Learning. That is definitely a, a good place for you to visit, um, finding out about the things you can do with the Microsoft 
um, stack beyond forms. Um, aka.ms forward slash Vic events, those are our remote learning webinars. Um, please go in and check that out. And also there's support.microsoft.com forward slash education, which we just showed you before. Now, if you want to get the slides and the recordings for this webinar, um, please uh, go to this website here, aka.ms forward slash DET webinars, not just for this webinar, but for the webinars we've done so far and also the webinars that we're going to make available moving forward. Um, and you can also get the slides, as I said, aka.ms forward slash mech newsletter is how to sign up for our newsletter. And that's it. That's all from us. Thanks very much. Bye bye.